This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Last year I tried building a model sailboat and it was kind of a failure. It was capable of sailing across the wind decently well and of course downwind, but it couldn't really go into the wind. And that's when I realized, sailboats suck. It was at that moment that I went online and ordered my miniature V8. There we go, that's much better. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, sailboats don't suck, they're just a bit more finicky than I had originally thought. I'm still working on modifying this one to sail more efficiently, but even if I get it working as well as possible, it will still have its limitations. Traditional sailboats are great at going in almost any direction except for directly into the wind. They just simply can't do it. If they do want to travel upwind, they have to do what's called tacking. This is where the boat zigzags into the wind. Sure, tacking can get you where you're trying to go, but it's definitely a bit of a hassle. This got me thinking. Is it possible there's a better way to harness the power of the wind? What if we keep the back and forth motion of tacking, but instead of making the whole boat go back and forth, we just make the sails go back and forth? Or maybe even just rotate? Aha! This seems like it could work. Turns out it's been done before. There are a handful of videos online showing rotary sailboats in action, and they appear to be capable of sailing directly into the wind. If this works, it could potentially change the future of sailing, so I just had to try it out. There is one major difference between this rotary sail mechanism and a traditional sailboat. Traditional sailboats get their thrust directly from the sail interacting with the wind. The rotary sail, on the other hand, doesn't directly make any thrust that propels the boat forward. Instead, it only makes mechanical power, and that power is transferred through shafts down to a propeller underwater. This extra step could be a big efficiency killer. Let's find out. Step one is to build a boat. I designed these catamaran holes in Onshape. They're long and narrow for high efficiency. They're also narrow enough to be cut out of 2 inch pink insulation foam. So I cut out some stock pieces and then milled them down to shape on my 3 axis CNC router. This construction method takes a lot of planning and setup time but leaves you with some pretty nicely shaped holes that are just about as lightweight as can be. After that I mixed up some epoxy and wetted out some 2 ounce fiberglass cloth onto the holes. The purpose of the fiberglass is to make the foam more durable and give it a smoother surface finish. After the epoxy cured, I trimmed off the excess fiberglass and then put it back in the CNC machine to cut a cavity in the center for electronics and stuff. I also cut a slot for the sticks that connect the two holes together. Next up came a little sanding to smooth out the fiberglass, and then I used Gorilla Glue to attach the two sticks into the holes. Finally came a layer of paint, and with that the whole construction was complete. If this catamaran looks familiar, that's because I initially built it for Jay from the Plasma Channel to use with his ionic thrusters. These use thousands of volts to generate an ionic wind that pushes the boat forwards. Not the fastest propulsion system, but the cool thing about it is that it's completely solid state. This boat has zero moving parts, and yet it's still fully controllable. So that's our hull. Now let's start on the rotary sail system. I hopped into Onshape and designed this mast with a drive shaft running through it. The wind turbine attaches here at the top, and that drives the water propeller at the bottom. To transfer the power at 90 degree angles, I'm using bevel gears. Getting this gear design right is extremely important because they need to be as frictionless as possible. I started by 3D printing some test gears so that I could adjust the meshing until they were able to spin freely. After the gear geometries were dialed in, I 3D printed the lower drive unit. This is the part that holds the propeller and the bevel gears underwater. I'm using the Form 3 Plus for all these SLS printed parts because it's capable of ultra fine detail and the materials are super strong. The drive shafts are made out of 3mm carbon tubes and those are constrained by ball bearings to keep the friction down. The lower unit design took a few iterations, but the final version was printed in Grey Pro resin. I spread out glue to attach the two halves together, and squirted thin grease everywhere to keep the glue from sticking to the moving parts, and also to reduce friction. Then the two halves got clamped together while the glue dried. I FDM printed the vertical mast portion. The thick carbon tube in the middle houses the drive shaft inside of it, and the two thinner tubes on either sides are just for additional strength. I 3D printed the mast in three sections, and those all got glued together. This wood plank goes in between the two catamaran holes, and the lower unit attaches to it just like this. Then the mast gets screwed into the lower unit with the plank in the middle. Here's the rotor head gear case. It's pretty similar to the lower unit, but a bit smaller, and the big difference is that it can pivot on top of the mast. This will allow the wind turbine to always face into the wind, regardless of which direction the boat is pointed. Kind of like a wind vane. That will hopefully allow this no sail zone to become a yes sail zone, with complete freedom to go in any direction I want. So the gear case got some glue and a little grease, and then the two halves got closed together and clamped to dry. Now it's time to build the rotor blade. I'm using 3mm Depron foam for this. To stiffen up the blades, I'm using tape and glue to hold a 3mm carbon tube onto the leading edge. While that glue was drying, I used some little 3D printed wedges to give the blades some twist. This should hopefully improve their aerodynamic efficiency. 
I trimmed the blades to narrow the tips in a little bit and then mounted all three in a little hub clamp. That got slid onto the shaft and our wind turbine was complete. Next up, I designed a small B-series propeller to fit on the lower unit and 3D printed it. The support material has to be sanded off and I tapped a little hole in the side for an M3 grub screw to hold it onto the shaft. By the way, if you want to access any of the CAD files from this video, they're available at the link in the description. Sign up for a free Onshape account and you'll be able to copy and modify all these files, down to the source sketches, so you can easily tailor them to fit your needs. After mounting the propulsion system to the boat, it was time for the first test. I threw together this little servo-controlled rudder that would hopefully allow me to steer. It's going quick. Unfortunately, when I would let go of the boat, it would just get blown backwards. It was also just way too windy on this day. Here the blades hit the mast and self-destructed. It's times like these when you can fall headfirst into the trough of despair. This is pretty typical with projects like these. At times they can be super rewarding, but when your ideas just aren't working out, it can get a bit depressing. Fighting your way through the trough of despair can really be taxing on one's mental health. But even just talking to someone can help you see the light at the end of the tunnel. In Steps, BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. For most people, the best thing you can do for your mental health is to sign up for an online therapy service. BetterHelp is all done remotely, which makes it super easy to squeeze therapy into your busy schedule. They've got over 30,000 therapists on their books now, so there's no doubt they can match you with someone that'll really help you out. They have an amazing algorithm that can help with this, and in most cases, it will pair you with a therapist within 48 hours. If you think you might benefit from therapy, you can click on the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash rctestflight. Using this link helps support the channel, which is super cool, but it'll also get you 10% off of your first month there. With BetterHelp, you can communicate with your therapist in whatever way makes you feel the most comfortable. There's phone, text, messaging, and even video chat. You can send them a message anytime or even schedule a video call for the future. There have been over 4 million people that have used BetterHelp. I've used it, it's been great for me, and I'm happy to be able to recommend it to my audience. Now let's go finish this boat. To me it seemed like the water propeller wasn't big enough, so I 3D printed a much larger one and stuck it on. Then it was back to the lake. It's also worth noting that I had the pivoting rotor head just taped in place at this point. I wanted to at least get the boat working decently well before experimenting with that. Doesn't go. Damn. Okay, well we tried it. So then it was back home to print yet an even larger propeller. Look at that. It's like pretty much holding its position. Maybe slipping to the side a little bit too much. So close. At first it seemed like it still wasn't going to work, but then I reduced the pitch of the wind turbine blades a bit. Doing this makes it spin a lot faster, which is good, but the downside is that it also gives it a lot more drag, which pushes the boat backwards. Despite this, it still seemed to help a lot more than hurt in our case. The wind was also pretty light on this day. A little more wind speed would have helped a lot. Dang, it got blown away. I'm trying to turn, but I can't. Yeah, it's done. I'm just gonna turn into it now. See if I can't swing it around and maybe steer going downwind. Now it's spinning backwards. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna need to wait for it to blow to shore now so I can go get it. As you can imagine, the rudder has hardly any control authority when the boat is moving this slowly. Once the boat strays too far off of center from the direction the wind is coming from, it has no chance of turning back. Hopefully the pivoting turbine head can help fix this later on. I feel like it's just messing with me. It won't blow downwind and it won't go upwind. It's just stuck in the middle. This thing is the worst. It's getting so close. Now we got a little more wind. Damn, that's a lot of thrust. Here you can see that more wind definitely helps it go into the wind a bit better. Here I turned the rotor 90 degrees to try and do some crosswind runs. Or a beam reach, as they call it. It definitely worked, but it was still super slow. Here's a downwind run with the rotor turned 180 degrees backwards. I'm actually surprised at how slow it is going downwind. It's really not fast at all. Here's another run directly into the wind. That extra wind speed definitely helps. Those are going to be the most diabetic ducks in the history of ducks. Look at all that bread. <laughs> the next day I made an even bigger propeller. Now we're at 140 millimeter diameter. Look at that prop. Oh yeah, it's pushing a lot of water. Oh yeah. Oh, it's going. The bigger prop and a little extra wind on this day helped a lot. Here it is going from one dock directly upwind to another. Finally, it was time to try out the pivoting rotor head. So the wind vane is obviously going to add some additional aerodynamic drag. But the question is, is it too much drag to still sail into the wind? Seems like it can still go into the wind just fine. So the question is, will the wind vane keep it oriented correctly if I do a full turn? Yeah, I'm turning hard for uh, star port. <laughs> 
Okay, let's try a full turn. Let's see. Oh happens. yeah. Woohoo! Yeah, baby. Oh yeah, this thing is kick ass, man. I can sail every which way. Yeah. Nice. Okay, now I'm gonna try and turn and then come back into the wind. That'll be the real trick. Can it do it? Yeah, it can. Woo! I guess it, it is kind of struggling to turn into the wind. It's taking a really long time to turn. The propeller is blowing its thrust right into the rudder, so it should have some thrust vectoring. Uh. Okay, there we made the turn. Oh, it's going fast in a crosswind. My biggest regret with this project was not making a better rudder. This one kind of sucked. I can't turn, uh, I can't turn left. I'm giving it full rudder and it's unable to make the turn. Oh, now it, now it made it. It just needed a little bit less wind. Yeah, it's hauling now. The boat also didn't really have a keel to help prevent lateral side slip, so that makes turning into the wind tricky. So this boat clearly isn't going to win any races, but the fact that we can sail in any direction is pretty impressive if you ask me. I think that with some more fine tuning, its performance could be significantly improved. For one, I think the water propeller is still too small. I had to really flatten out the blade pitch to get the propellers to spin fast enough to work. Peter Worsley, the guy online who has seemed to experiment with this stuff the most, says a 45 degree blade pitch angle is optimal. Whenever I made my blade pitch 45 degrees, it would work really poorly. This is because it had too much torque and not enough RPM. Whereas, if I had a bigger water propeller, that extra torque would get put to good use and the lower RPM wouldn't really matter as much. And a 45 degree windmill pitch angle would also give significantly less drag, so there's a lot more to be experimented with. On this day, there was way too much wind. You can see how the fronts of the hulls are even coming up out of the water from all the drag on the windmill. Despite this, I was still able to navigate the boat in all directions relative to the wind. It wasn't easy, but again, a better rudder and a bit of a keel would have helped a lot. <laughs> we got a runaway sailboat. Oh, the, the rotor broke off. So after I had my fun with this thing, I thought I'd try out the simpler axial rotor sail configuration, just to see if I could go upwind any faster. I'm using 6mm carbon tubes as the drive shaft on this one, and I found some bearings that fit right into the ends of these 15mm carbon fiber tubes. The drive shaft has to be almost 2 meters long, so I'm joining two 1 meter tubes together with these couplers, and that just fits inside of this FDM printed part that attaches to the boat. I also printed a tractor prop that would pull instead of push. And that's it. Super simple. Even the water propeller in the wind is enough to make it spin. So I'm in kind of a cove right now, and the wind is coming this way, so I should be able to launch the boat here and hopefully I'll just be able to go retrieve it on the other end of this cove. But if the boat doesn't work well and it gets blown downwind, then it's gonna go out into the open lake and that's gonna be a big problem because it'll be really hard to find. So this will be exciting. Damn, it's hauling ass. The nice thing about this design is that it just auto aligns itself into the wind. That's obviously a downside if you're trying to sail any other direction, but for upwind runs like this, it's great. So I don't think this axial rotor sail is really all that much faster than the previous build. It's maybe slightly faster because of the lack of gear friction, but not by much. The rotor angle on this one is a slight disadvantage. It would be better if the rotor was completely vertical rather than tilted slightly down with the shaft. The biggest difference is that this one only wants to go into the wind. Whereas, in order to get the other one to go into the wind, I would have to really be on top of the controls. Otherwise, it would just get blown off course. This one auto-aligns into the wind like a wind vane. Now we're getting some good breeze. It's going quick. I can see it kind of starting to lift the front of the pontoon holes up out of the water because there's so much drag up high in the back. I almost stepped on this thing. Looks like a bird caught a fish. The boat's getting closer to shore, slowly but surely. It's getting close to the end of the bay, too. Getting closer. Whoa, look at this. That's a big turtle shell. That's interesting. It's got a crack through it. Maybe it got hit by a boat prop. I made it to the other side of the bay, but as you can see, there's no wind here because it's sheltered by all these trees. So <laughs> hopefully it doesn't just get up to the point where the wind dies and then it just stops out in the middle and it's stuck there for a long time. That's probably gonna be what happens. We'll see. This bottle's just floating upright. It must have some ballast in the bottom. I think as it nears all the turbulence from these trees and everything that are upwind, it's kind of getting blown back and forth like this more, and that makes it less efficient, so it's going slower now. And probably just less wind, I guess. Got some onlookers over there. Uh-oh. 
for how fast the blades are spinning now. It does not seem like it's moving forward very much at all. That could indicate that there's seaweed in the propeller. I feel like it's now periodically actually going backwards. Just going back and forth now. A lot more turbulence here. Oh, I can totally see the shaft. It's covered in seaweed. Crap. And then occasionally it stops dead like this. It's probably going backwards right now. It's just in this dead zone right now, hardly spinning at all. That's where we started, over there on that point. And this is how far we've come, so far. Still haven't made it all the way. We'll see. It's going. Every now and then it gets a gust and moves forward a bit. Just a tiny bit more. It's getting so close. So close. Look at all those weeds on there. That's crazy. Here it comes. It's coming right to me. The prop's about to hit the ground. And there it goes, it hit. <laughs> we made it. I can't believe it. Incredible. That took way longer than I expected. Went quite a ways though. So the big question is, will rotary sailboats replace normal sailboats? I think the answer is probably no. Being able to sail directly into the wind is nice, but you're losing a lot of efficiency by putting the energy from the wind through the blades and down into the water propeller to then make thrust. Whereas with a normal sailboat, the energy just goes into the sail, and that's it. It just directly pushes the boat. That said, my rotary sail setup was far from optimal. I'd like to revisit this in the future and try a more efficient wind turbine blade design, and a higher aspect ratio water propeller, and a larger water propeller to air turbine size ratio. For a lot of people, it might seem pretty counterintuitive that a boat can sail directly into the wind, powered by nothing but the wind, but it makes a lot more sense when you think about it in terms of airplane wings. The effectiveness of an airplane wing is measured by its lift to drag ratio. A super efficient glider can have a lift to drag ratio upwards of 50 to 1. That means that for every one unit of drag force it incurs, it can make 50 units of lift force. That's pretty amazing if you ask me. For the sake of explaining rotary sails, it would be easier to understand if we look at it in terms of percentages. If we convert this 50 to 1 ratio into a percentage, it's 98%. So this means that out of all the forces the glider generates from passing through the air, 98% is lift and 2% is drag. The blades on my rotary sail are basically just wings spinning around in a circle. These blades are probably much less efficient than a glider wing, so let's just assume they have a lift to drag ratio of 10 to 1. Or in other words, 90% of the force they generate goes into rotational energy, while 10% goes into drag that pushes the boat backwards. That rotational energy gets transferred down to the water propeller, but there are some slight losses in the gears and bearings, so let's say only 95% of it actually makes it to the water propeller. Then, the water propeller also has a lift to drag ratio. Let's be really conservative here and say that it's only 5 to 1. This means that 80% of the energy put into it gets converted to lift, or thrust in this case, while 20% gets wasted as drag. So if we combine all these percentages together, out of the initial 100% of wind force that the blades encountered, 68% is converted to forward thrust from the water propeller that's pushing the boat forwards, and only 32% is fighting against us. Since 68% is greater than 32%, the thrust wins and the boat moves forward. But wait, there's also drag from the wind hitting the rest of the boat's structure, and it takes force to overcome the hydrodynamic friction and push the hull through the water. This all reduces the thrust to drag ratio so that the boat is barely making more thrust than it has drag. And that's why this boat is slow as crap. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is that the wind turbine blades make way more rotational force than drag. This is the magic. This is the leverage that the boat needs to be able to overcome all the aerodynamic drag pushing it backwards and still move forwards. The magic is in the lift to drag ratio. This was probably a very inaccurate description of what's really going on here, and the numbers are all made up, but hopefully it'll help some people wrap their head around how it's possible. By the way, this sort of thing also works on land-based vehicles. This is the Blackbird, which was made famous on the Veritasium channel. It was designed to drive downwind, powered by nothing but the wind, yet still go faster than the wind. Seems impossible, but it turns out it's not. They also claim that the Blackbird is capable of driving directly into the wind at twice the speed of the wind. Pretty impressive. This really doesn't surprise me because powering a wheeled vehicle through its wheels is so much more efficient than powering a boat via its propeller. Anyways, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.